Hey everyone. Well, this is the third day of uh, me working on the upgrades on my 2009 Harley Davidson Ultra Classic, part of the Building the Thunder series that is sponsored by DinoJet. So, time to recap where we've where we've been so far. Um, we're doing the SNS 110 inch big bore kit, um, SNS teardrop air filter, and SNS Eldorado uh, 50 state legal exhaust. Day one was basically disassembly of the motorcycle and the engine. I got uh, effectively everything apart and I got the first cylinder put back on. Uh, day two, um, I ended up doing the rest of the disassembly, which really was just a matter of pulling out the old cam bearings because I needed to get a new tool for that. And I'll talk about that more towards the end in terms of little extra things I found along the way that I wish I'd gotten to start. And then I did most of the reassembly, and that's kind of where we are right now. I've got the cams in, I've got the cam support plate in, I've got the new tensioners in. Basically the whole bottom end is, is ready, and I could have actually put the cover back on, I just decided not to because it's a whole lot easier to turn the engine over um, this way than by trying to turn the back wheel with it in sixth gear. Even though this isn't exactly recommended, I don't think I'm hurting anything, so I'm, I'm comfortable doing that. I've got the cylinders on, everything's torqued down there, the heads are on and all of that. Um, my next step is gonna be the valve train. Um, I've got the push rods in and I need to put the rocker assemblies on and get the push rods adjusted. Um, and then after that, I'm gonna be putting the cover back on the camshafts um, and I'm gonna start working on the exhaust and, and hopefully get to the point where we can run the motorcycle today. So uh, let's get to work. Okay, I'm all set up here to start doing the push rods on the rear cylinder. So a couple of things I'm gonna note before I get started on this. I've got the rocker uh, assembly installed and torqued on. Before I did that, I made sure that I had my push rod tube assemblies all um, put together the way they needed to be. Make sure that the push rods are installed with the adjustment end down. Um, if you put them on, if you have the adjustment end up, you will not be able to adjust it. So they need to be pointed down when you do that. Um, so what SNS says in the manual is that you get the push rod so that they're just contacting at the lifter and at the um, lifter and at the rocker, and you should be able to still spin it freely like that. And so then once you do that, you need to tighten it an additional four turns um, and then lock down the lock nut. And so then once you have that done, you're supposed to wait 30 minutes before you do the next one on that same cylinder. And then you can move over and then let it bleed down. And then you can move over to the other cylinder and then do that side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this adjusted. And then uh, I'll probably move on to the oil cooler while I'm waiting since, um, this, is gonna, since this is gonna take a while. I wasn't able to really get any video while I was installing the oil cooler here. Um, combination of reasons for that. One is the position of the motorcycle. Um, I had to open the garage door and uh, to get at it. And it's just pretty, uh, it's just fairly tight in here. Not in terms of the fact that it's hard to work on, just hard to get a camera in there. Um, so let me just talk through a couple of things here. So the instructions, this is really straightforward. I mean, you, pra you, you really practically don't need instructions on it. You, you don't need instructions on it, but it, it's, um, it's very simple and straightforward. And this is something you can do standalone uh, quite easily. Um, certainly a little bit nicer to have things apart, but I, I don't think it would make much of a difference. So basically you take off um, the threaded nut that goes into um, the oil filter housing and that's what the oil filter normally goes on. And then you've got this adapter plate. Um, and you'll note that the, um, that the nipples are up um, or in the 12 o'clock position. There are some little tabs that uh, help to make sure that you have it in the right position, um, but you could theoretically install it the wrong way. Um, if you do that, then the hoses aren't gonna fit. So make sure that you have it pointed up. Um, I also went ahead and put the oil filter on when I did that um, because that was uh, that way when I put the hoses on, I can make sure that nothing's gonna touch or interfere. Um, one note here is that 
the 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 um, fitting that you have to screw on to hold this adapter in place is a seven sixteenths Allen key. Um, that is something that you probably won't have uh, in your toolbox um, unless you have a really complete Allen key set. So just to just to be aware of that, um, I actually didn't. So I had to um, I had to well what I did um, is I ended up taking a quarter twenty bolt. Um, because that's a 7 16 head and then I was able to tighten using that so there's a little trick if um, if you're in a pinch um, the uh, the little sh bar and shield cover that goes over the oil cooler uh, was a little tight um, uh, but uh, it there's enough give that you can basically just pull up on on the top portion just a bit and it'll slide right in and then you just do the three bolts to put it onto the bracket um, unbolt the voltage regulator uh, the manual says to undo the connectors. I, I didn't have to. There was enough room that I was able to just put those on, and then that was it. Um, and then the last part is you've got to put the hoses on, which I'm about to do. But something just to point out is the hoses are conveniently marked cooler left and cooler right. And so long as you do that, you can see on the diagram, it's, it's really straightforward. So um, definitely two thumbs up to Harley for this for this kit. This is a uh, uh, nice and easy to put together and high quality. So um, it's about time for me to go do some more push rod adjusting. So I'm going to get these hoses on and uh, keep moving forward. Okay, with the oil cooler uh, installed completely, uh, I'm back over here on this side of the engine. So uh, at this point, I got both of the rear cylinder push rods adjusted. Um, I then installed the rocker assembly for the front cylinder. Um, and then, uh, well, first I found top dead center for the front cylinder. Just as kind of a point of reference for uh, what I found, the you have the little dots here. So if the dot on the cam gear is pointed straight at the dot on the crank gear, then that's basically top dead center for the rear cylinder. And um, the way it's pointed right now with this dot, um, just a little bit past 12 o'clock position, um, that was about top dead center for the front cylinder. So now I've got this intake push rod for the, um, for the front cylinder adjusted. So that's bleeding down on the clock now. So while that's happening, I'm gonna go make sure that there's a lot of assembly lube, um, uh, just kind of recode everything in here and take another look. And then I'm gonna put on this cover. And um, then I think I will be at a, at a point where I can start putting the exhaust on uh, while I'm waiting for this to bleed down and do the other push rod. So uh, let's keep going. Hey, okay, put the cover on, uh, torqued it down. Before I um, start working on the exhaust, uh, I'm gonna start off by um, putting the push rod, getting the push rod tubes all the way together. So the, so the S and S push rod tubes include these little, um, these top parts that, uh, kind of hold it, that hold it all together, which if you'll notice, they're a different design from the Harley ones, which, uh, I guess I've put elsewhere, but the Harley ones have a little clip that you put your, um, screwdriver in out, uh, this way to pop them out. I actually like this design better. So we'll start off with the intake tube. Um, hopefully you've made sure before you put it all together that you have all the O-rings in the right places. And then you wanna make sure that you got your, your top portion uh, properly seated. And we'll get, uh, let's see, there we go. Get, um, get the middle portion there. All right, top parts seated up there. So you just take, you just kind of get this started and then you take a, just a flathead screwdriver, put it in here, and then just kind of wiggle it. And there you have it. And we'll do the second one now on this cylinder. And of course, before I'm doing all of this, I made sure that the before I rotated the engine over, I made sure that the push rods could still 
spin with um, with uh, finger force, like SNS uh, says you need to check after the adjustment and bleed down. And there we go. There we go. Easy as can be. All right. So now this is this is all all done. In fact, I'll just go ahead and put this little clamp on. And uh, now I can start working on the exhaust on this side while I'm waiting for uh, the one uh, lifter to bleed down before I do the other one for the front cylinder. And then um, uh, once I wait on that, I'll be able to uh, do some, keep on moving on the exhaust more so. All right, so I ended up, um, uh, while I was waiting for the lifters to bleed down, I didn't end up starting on the exhaust. Um, I got the exhaust out, started looking through the instructions, um, realized for one, uh, which I'd forgotten. This is this Y pipe's all a single piece, so you can't really um, put it on um, until you're ready to have this area partially obstructed. I really want to, wouldn't obstruct things too much, but um, I just want that to be done. So I did a few things on the other side. I got the spark plugs torqued down. Um, I got the uh, horn back on. Some of the little things that won't be in the way. Um, but that needed to get done. And I put oil in since uh, I could do that now with the cover back on. Um, one thing that I just wanted to note before I put the Y pipe on, um, if you look carefully, you'll see there's a flange on this side, not on this side. So that's because um, this Y pipe actually does not come with the flanges. You have to reuse them from your previous exhaust, um, which is something I did not know uh, beforehand or I hadn't seen in the instructions. So I've already gotten this side off. Um, not not a big deal. Just make sure that if you're going to be doing this that um, you don't just throw out the, ex the old exhaust. Um, really, you don't really want to throw away parts, old parts anyway, until the project is completed. But if this goes on like the other side, just rolls on simply. And there you have it. Um, SNS includes the exhaust gasket, so now I'm just going to go ahead and get this um, lined up, um, kind of get it on loosely and tighten it up, uh, then tighten it down. Um, before you put it, another thing before you put it on, SNS says to put on this lower P clamp here um, between the collector and the uh, O2 sensor. Um, something else I think I'll just note here is. Um, you may recall that I had already done, I'd done an exhaust previously um, uh, on my bike shortly after I got it. And one of the things I noticed on that Y pipe was that the O2 sensors were um, about equidistant from the uh, exhaust port. Uh, for some reason, SNS puts the lower one down here. I don't know if that's the stock location and, and, or or not since it's been just a really long time. But um, so I had to unclip uh, the pigtail uh, for the exhaust sensor. Um, I'm gonna have to do a few more zip ties once I get that together, but uh, let's let's go ahead and get this on. All right, so I've got the exhaust uh, basically installed at this point. I still have to tighten a few things down. So far, this has been by far the most aggravating part of the project. Um, so I'll explain why. So SNS makes this Y pipe as a single piece, and there's theoretically I, there is enough give to get it onto both cylinders. Um, but uh, the way they tell you to do it is to get the rear cylinder seated, and then with a quote unquote firm tug on the front pipe, get that seated. Uh, there was a lot of cursing involved in getting that done. Um, did finally get it. It would. What my tip would be, now that I got it on, if you can have a second person, that would be helpful because to get the orientation right, having somebody kind of pulling up in this area um, will help to get the front uh, pipe where it belongs. Um, with all of these kits, I ended up with four exhaust gaskets. Um, I ended up using all of them because I damaged uh, two, of, uh, damaged two of them while trying to do the front cylinder third time was the charm, but um, uh, that, that was not pleasant. Um, other thing I'll say is that uh, getting this side pipe on, the right side, was also a challenge. Um, and 
the real reason for that is because if you take a look carefully, you can see that right here, this kind of sticks down a bit, and this is sized, uh, this is sized well so that these uh, little nubs um, are where they need to be so everything lines up properly. The problem is that when you're trying to slip it on to here, um, that starts interfering. So if you really wanted to, you could loosen some bolts and um, try to try to loosen up the, the bracket that that mounts to. Um, what ended up working for me uh, was just some a couple of uh, some taps on the back with a dead blow hammer. Um, I've mentioned in another video that I really like dead blow hammers for that kind of thing because you can uh, do that without uh, risk of damage. Yeah, obviously you could damage if you hit hard enough, but usually it's not a problem. And so basically you get everything together. You also got that crossover bracket underneath. Make sure that everything is together and loose and then you just kind of tighten it down. Start off from the exhaust ports and then kind of work your way backwards. And then, um, then it's all set. So I'm gonna finish tightening this down. And then um, next, I'm probably gonna go ahead and put on the teardrop uh, air cleaner. All right, so I'm here installing the air cleaner. Um, there's, one kind, there's one special thing you gotta pay attention to with this. So SNS provides you with um, eight of what they call these rubber coated washers. Now these go on the front here on each of these bolts and then on the back between uh, this um, uh, between this casting and the uh, and the cylinder. So these are uh, banjo bolts. They're for the breathers. Uh, so it's important that these seal correctly. Otherwise, you're going to have leaks. So when you put these in and torque them down, you need to uh, check with a feeler gauge to make sure that you don't have any kind of spacing back here. Um, I checked, everything's good, so now we're ready to put on the, uh, the air cleaner. Doesn't that look nice? I think this is looking really, really good. I'm ready to put the tank on, uh, connect the battery, and um, then I'm just gonna go do a once over and make sure that I've got all of my wires and everything zip tied and out of the way so that I don't burn anything. And then uh, if the battery has a charge, we'll see if this starts. Well, she's looking like a motorcycle again. Tank's on, everything's connected. Um, battery's connected. It looks like it's got good voltage. Um, I've got all my wires tied off. I've checked the fluids. Engine is filled with oil. Uh, got the motor mount on, got the exhaust on, got the air cleaner on. So I think at this point, we're ready to do attempt a first start and see what happens. Now, SNS says that uh, your first start should be about a minute between 1250 and 1750 RPM, and that you don't want to subject the engine to any kind of load, so don't don't uh, crack the throttle or anything like that, just, just real, real gentle. So, uh, all right, let's give it a whirl. Sounds like the battery's a little bit low, so I'm gonna try one more time, and if this doesn't work, I'm just gonna put it on the charger. Yeah, I think it's just not cranking hard enough. Um, so I'm gonna put it on a charger, give it a bit. Um, really not surprising, given how long this thing sat. Well, it's getting to be the end of my third day working on this motorcycle. Um, we're at the point where we're ready for first start. The first attempt, it did not fire. Um, not necessarily surprising. The battery may be a little bit low from sitting. Didn't sound like it was cranking quite as strong as what I might want it to. Um, of course, now we've also got 110 inches instead of 96 inches, and uh, we've got a higher compression ratio. Now, we'll try it again after after I do, after I record this and it's had a little bit of a chance to charge, and then we'll just see whether or not it fires. Um, keep in mind that at this point, it's got a fuel map that is completely off. 
So there could be something relating to that as well. Um, so we'll just have to we'll just have to see if it'll start or not. And if not, I'll give Joe a call at Powerhouse Dino and talk to the Dino Jet guys and see if they have any suggestions. But it definitely sounds like it's making solid compression on both cylinders and uh, and turning over. So that's good. Um, probably at this point, I'll just comment on uh, a couple. First off, a few things that I have not done yet, and that's intentional. So I haven't put the uh, shiny exhaust shields on the exhaust. Um, I'm not going to do that until after the dyno run. If you remember, um, when they do the dyno run, Joe's going to put in some uh, rib nuts so that he can get a good air fuel signal to the dyno. Um, he's going to have to take those shields off anyway. There's no point in me putting them on. At this point, I haven't done first start yet, so there's no point in putting the seat on or the saddlebags because if there's a leak, I'm going to have to take it all back apart uh, to figure out what's the source of the leak. That's also why I haven't put the, the step back on. Um, so, and I haven't cleaned up yet, although I think I'll probably start doing, um, start doing that here in a little bit. So what are my thoughts now that I've completed this kit uh, or completed the installation, at least to the point of being ready to for first start? Um, I think first thing I'd say is that in the unboxing videos, I pointed out that it seemed like SNS had really complete kits and I still agree with that. A um, couple of caveats there. First off, uh, for the big bore um, power pack kit, they do not include the gaskets either for the breather assembly that's under the rocker covers um, or for the rocker boxes, both the, the, between the box and the cover and also between the box and the head. So those were things that I had to go to the Harley dealer to buy. Um, special tools, um, we needed to have the torque wrench, the, um, the, the uh, um, ring expander pliers for the uh, piston rings. Um, I had said in the initial video that I wasn't going to use the spring compressor tool, and in the end I did. I found it to be a lot easier, so I'm glad that I did that. Um, one special tool that I needed to buy that I didn't expect to need, um, but I should have expected, was the, uh, was the cam bearing puller tool. Um, you know, you can make a decision about whether you want to leave them in or not, but as Joe pointed out when I asked his opinion, you know, you're, you're in there already and the new bearings are substantially better than the old ones, so you may as well do it. Um, that tool was around a hundred bucks, so that was another, uh, between those and the gaskets, probably about another 120, 140 bucks, somewhere in that range over what um, I was, uh, over the cost of the kit. So when you're talking about what you're spending on this, really not too big of a deal. Um, the exhaust was definitely the most annoying to install out of all of this, um, which is kind of surprising when you think about how deep into the engine you're going with the big bore kit and the cams. Um, but I, I do feel like if, I understand why SNS wanted to make this Y pipe a single piece. At the same time, I feel like if they had uh, just put a little slip joint in, in this area, it would have made the installation so much easier. Um, trying to get the front and the rear pipes lined up like that was, was a real pain. Um, got it done. It would have been easier with a second person, um, but uh, definitely the exhaust is the heart is, was the most annoying part to install, even though it's, um, you know, not necessarily considered hard by any stretch. Um, so let's say that you're a person who hasn't done this kind of project before and you're thinking, should I do it or not? So I think there's a couple things to consider. First one is from a skill level pers uh, perspective, if, if you know, you know, which end of a wrench is which, um, there's no reason why you can't do this. Um, there's, there's really, to be honest, like I said, that Y pipe on the exhaust was the hardest part of the whole thing. Um, everything else really pretty straightforward to come apart. Um, if you take your time and you follow the directions, there's nothing really that's too difficult with any of this. Um, you know, you'll make a few mistakes along the way. Um, I, certainly I did, and, and that'll take you a little bit longer, but there's there's nothing that's inherently really challenging in, on this. Um, and if you're and if, if you're interested in learning about engines and doing, a, doing this kind of project, um, really, this isn't a bad place to start. Um, you know, everything went together pretty easily. It gives you an excuse to buy some cool tools. Um, oh, the ring filing tool, that was the other one that I 
needed to buy and absolutely needed. Um, but probably the biggest thing to consider is the time aspect. So um, at the start of this, I think I mentioned that SNS says that this can be done in a day. And I think for, for a, a, an equipped shop that's done this before, um, like if you took it over to Powerhouse Dyno, um, Cycle and Dyno, where we've done, where we did the initial Dyno run, and when, where we're going to do the Dyno tune, Joe probably could do it in about a day um, if he wasn't getting interrupted or anything like that. For me, I expected that it was going to be two days. Uh, Joe said to plan for three, and he was spot on. We're at the end of day three now, and it's been three full days of working, you know, eight nine hours of, of working each time. And, um, and and that that I, it really wouldn't have gone too much faster. Um, I hit a snag at the end of day one when I didn't have the cam bearing tool, so I had to order that. Um, I had to go to the Harley dealer to pick up the gaskets for the um, for the rocker boxes as well as the gaskets for the um, for the breathers. And you're going to run into stuff like that. So if you want to. So you, you, I would definitely start off by planning that this would be a three-day thing, maybe even a fourth day. Um, I would also expect it to take more than one weekend because you're probably going to run into something that you're going to need to order. Maybe you've got a great Harley dealer or other motorcycle shop nearby that is going to have the parts that you need in stock. Um, maybe not. But then life happens, and so you take a look at the calendar time. Um, this actually has spanned over a month for me, and it's, it's just because life gets busy and things happen. So that's been over a month that I've been without being able to ride the motorcycle. Um, and certainly I didn't intend, it for, to intend for it to go that way. So, so those are all things to consider. If you're doing this over the winter where you're not cutting into riding season and you don't really care too much about uh, if it takes a month or so, then that's probably a better time to do it. Um, but don't set yourself up to be trying to rush to finish it uh, because then that's when mistakes are gonna happen. But overall, I'd say if, if, you're, new, if you're new, relatively inexperienced to wrenching, um, there's still no reason why you can't attack this. Just make sure to read the manuals, take your time, be careful. Um, and uh, I guess the only other thing I'd say is you take a look at the tools I have scattered all over the floor, and I've used all of these. These are all tools that I brought over here because I needed them at some point, and I've put some away. So keep in mind, you're probably gonna be making some runs to Harbor Freight at some point because you found a tool that you need that you don't have. Um, you know, one, one other comment I'd make is that this, you, for, for some reason on this motorcycle, they've got Torx, they've got Allen heads, They've got standard hex heads, and they're in all different locations. So you're, you're gonna need sets of each. Um, so that's just something to consider. But again, no reason why you can't do this um, on your own, but if you're looking to get it done quickly, you can take it to a shop, have them do it, get a dyno tune done, probably be done within a week and be back to riding. So that's just the kind of things you gotta balance. So it's been sitting on the charger for a little bit. I'm gonna give it another shot and see if it'll start. and. Uh, if so, we'll see how it sounds, and if not, we'll call it a day, and I'll just uh, try it again. I'll try again on Monday when uh, after I can get a little bit of input from some other folk on what else to check. Well, I said you need to go take a look at everything, make sure that you didn't miss anything, and uh, it's pretty hard for an engine to start if the fuel tank is not connected to uh, the fuel line. So, oops. Um, let's see if it starts now.
All right, good oil pressure, sounds great. Let's see if we uh, see any signs of leaks. So far, I'm not seeing anything that looks like a leak. Um, let's see, yeah. The, the smoke off of the exhaust, that's pretty normal when you have a new exhaust because you've, um, you've, you've got your coatings on it. And that's, I'm not concerned about that at all. Um, it'll, that'll go away on its own. So SNS says to go ahead and uh, run it again for about three to four minutes if everything's looking good after the first run. So um, let's go ahead and try that. I'm gonna take another quick look here. Oil pressure was looking good. Maybe I'll just check the oil level here. Just make sure it doesn't look like it's out of line. good to me. All right, let's try it again.
think I'll just end the video here for today. Um, there's a, it's supposed, you're supposed to do a couple more uh, of these three minute runs per the instructions, but uh, they are, they're, all, they're all about like this one. Um, so yeah, started right up first try, so um, it does help if you plug in the fuel tank. That was a dumb mistake on my part, but um, if that's the worst mistake I made, then that's not so bad. Uh, one thing that I don't know if you could hear in the video or not, but that when you first started it, when I first started it up, um, you could really hear the uh, what's called a piston slap. Um, I think in the previous video when I was putting things together, I, I noted just how much clearance there is between the pistons and the cylinder walls um, with this upgrade because you've got these very nice forged pistons, but forged pistons do need to have more clearance. So. That piston slap went away after a few minutes, so that tells me that the pistons have expanded um, at least most of the way to make that go go away. Um, but that's kind of a good illustration of, of just how important it is to have uh, have the um, have everything warmed up and why these engines are not going to be very tolerant if you just take a cold engine and go full throttle on it without letting things warm up properly. You kind of have to treat it like an old like any other older traditional engine where you had the, the adage of waiting until it was fully warmed up before you beat on it. So, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this here. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks to DinoJet for sponsoring. Make sure that you check out the DinoJet channel if you're watching this on my channel and then uh, vice versa because we're going to have slightly different uh, content. And then the next step is going to be taking it to the dyno, getting the dyno tuned in, and, that's, and then that's where it all comes together and we get to see how much power this thing really makes. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.